Hello and welcome to a project that's been ongoing since the early 1990s. So naturally you're going to come in in the middle. What this is, is some daily updates that I recorded on my mobile phone just to capture what I was up to. There are other films which you know follow a theme or follow a project all the way through. So this is literally me walking around the shed, talking to myself, holding the phone out. Uh, this is the first one where I've combined loads of separate ones together. So I've got the individual ones in a playlist and this is the moment when I worked out how to edit them all together. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. More than anything I appreciate the comments and uh, on this one in particular the format. I um, put some subtitles in because this is some months ago and I've, I've learnt a fair amount since. So the green paint's done. I'm happy with tube bending, especially with this little block of wood trick. Um, but the 15 mil tube, you know, I, I really like. I bought some more of that, and I'm going to frame the inside of the cowl, and then I'll have the radiator mounted separately. I've been working out how I'm going to put this all together, and I bought these little countersunk M6, which will go into riv nuts, so that'll all screw on through the original holes to a good sturdy frame. Um, M6 is a bit big, but it good to standardize. So the next thing was a bit of bead rolling to make it look a bit posh and I've had this a while, there's issues with it and YouTube is full of people upgrading these. You know it gets several episodes of each modification. And the first thing people do is is a spring to pull this back up again because it just kind of flops down. I thought how about rubber bands and uh, Got a big box of O-rings and three that size seems to have done it. So that was easy. Next thing people do is put a handle on the top, which again tends to be, you know, the lathe comes out and all the rest of it. And I thought, well, jam jar lid clamped on a nice long M10 bolt, having a lot of bolts to choose from obviously helps. And, and that goes up and down a treat now. Um, can obviously get a lot of force for a jam jar lid. Uh, and it's only a clamp, you can get a lot of force just through that, so I'm hopeful. But I might put a bar on it, might put a handle on it, but that's a good start. The next thing is down this end, there's a handle to wind around. Which is all very well when it's in that position and you're trying to reach. But once it gets around the other side, it's a stretch. So putting a wheel on makes things a lot easier. So cut a disc of OSB off the floor. That's done. The next thing people do is motorise and you go and get some mo motorbike chain and, and a winch, you know, from like a trailer winch and modify that and buy a variable speed control and put switch gear in and have cooling for all of the electronics. And I thought I've got a high torque motor right here with a variable speed. Um, so found a pulley that was kicking around and whatever size that is I welded into whatever size I could get in the chuck and um, that's got quite a lot of torque. So that will pull you know, 10 kilo battery up and down under control and the speed it goes, you know, it's a nice speed to pull that string round. Um, and if only I had a piece of string that went round and round and round. And uh, a V belt's an obvious thing to try instead of a chain. And I've seen people make wooden V belt. People who kind of make their own bandsaw. Uh, and I'm not without woodworking equipment, so I'm starting on that. Unfortunately, all my fret saw collection and cars on the drive and all the rest haven't yielded the right size belts and had to actually go shopping for that. But that's uh, starting to come on. Something else I realised is I'm going to want this higher to see where I'm going, more like fret saw height. Um, but yeah, that's well on the way to being quite a nice functional tool. So I've got the remote control drill working really nicely. Um, bicycle brake that was part of one of William's DT projects. 
and I've got this quite soft mounted so if things get out of control this doesn't pull itself apart um, so that's pressing down on the rubber bumper um, so it's got sort of rubber on in case builds drop it and things I've also gone for an approach with this nut driver which tolerates quite big changes in angle and keep the drive unit separate from the spindle and then the spindle might live down on the uh, bead roller or I might use the power unit to power a nibbler or something else. Uh, this was for a flat belt which isn't going to work for me. I'm going to go back to V-belts and might carve that or replace that pulley. So mark one, mark two, onto mark three. But I'm very happy with the spindle which is a pair of bearings and then lock nuts to make sure that they're not um, not squeezed. Uh, I found out how to stop that all spinning. Um, and then lock nuts hold that in and then a bit of space for those to wiggle. And then these nuts on the end and it can just slip in a housing and you know, it spins, spins very nicely. Uh, this will take a V-belt when I've bought one. I'm going to shape it a bit more when I've bought the V-belt if it's needed. But that's already a very worthwhile upgrade um, so I don't have to reach for the handle so that would make you know make working on this much much easier in the same way as the uh, you know, the rubber bands and the easy adjust so I, I could do it all you know with it like that but one of the benefits of motorizing is you've then got two hands free um, so you can aim it much better so the precision's there. Um, and also an itch I want to scratch. Had a little bit of time on this again and I've committed to this spindle and welded that nut into there and then down this end I've welded the two nuts that hold the spindle and then this one which has cut off an axle clamp bolt. For my clutch mechanism I've got a couple of draw slides, I was going to do a pivot but I had the draw slides so that will do and they click quite nicely on and off. So what I'm trying to work out now is how much space I need to get the drill in and out and support it gently so I've got sort of a block that goes on that rubber piece and it slots in there. The base plate I think can be a bit narrower so I've got space this side where the battery goes and to clear that gear wheel. Um, Something I want to have as well is a hand wheel on the end. So when I'm doing it, I can disengage the drill, spin it on the hand wheel, re-engage the drill. The forward and reverse on here, I might be able to leave enough clearance that I just reach in and do it. Um, if I leave just enough finger clearance so uh, I'm puzz puzzling it all through as to quite what the structure will be, how big a footprint. One thing that I'm trading off with this design is clearance underneath. So I've obviously got lots of clearance above, and if that knob's low, can have cylinders going round. But I want some clearance below so I could hang that over the edge of the bench and do sort of mud guards going in that way. Um, so I want to keep it reasonably tight, you know, to leave quite a bit of space here. Uh, but it's, it's shaping up. You know, I'm, I'm pleased to be back on it. So I'm happy with the trigger mechanism and I can adjust kind of the bite point and adjust the cable this end as well as the other end. I'm happy with this clutch mechanism and I'm happy I've got clearance to um, ping the trigger mechanism out 
It's been quite tight. And take that out and then get the drill out fairly easily. One hand was trying to film. So I'm not happy with the ergonomics. Um, and I'm also happy with the compromise that I've got the drill underneath and I'm limited here. Because it's all bits of wood, I could take the power unit and run the power unit this end and then clamp that with all the overhang I want. Um, something else I'm not compromising on is I could throw this away and get a slightly better one that hasn't got kind of wobbly blocks and horrible gears and bent and this up and down. Probably going to improve this one over time if I need to, but I'm not welding pieces onto this and this becoming a more and more exotic machine. Um, so I think it's now the start of the project to build the structure, so something to support all the way at this end um, and hold the spindle in. And what I've decided for the chain tensioning is I'll move the big blue piece left and right on the bridges rather than trying to fiddle around with the power unit end. So, you know, I'm pleased with the design and, and where I've got to. Um, final final little piece and there's my first bead roll um, done from the machine which looks finished but it isn't it's only to do the hand wheel on the end but the structures come together and it's all painted so I went with green for kind of the base layer and then the gray bit would unbolt and then I could use that on its own on the bench black for the stuff that moves so there's the clutch lever There's the sliding carriage, red for my trigger mechanism. Um, I'm pleased with this for adjusting the bite point. So that drives a bolt in. I've upgraded this to a wing nut for doing the cable clamping. Uh, it comes in and out really quickly, it's really good. Rather than waste another bit of material, I'll just run a bit of cardboard through. Get that started. You can do it you know, very slowly, which is good if I want to do really intricate shapes. But unlike most motorized ones, I can also accelerate. So if I've got batches of stuff to do, I've got tricky corners and then some long straights, I can do that. Um, I can get the battery in and out without taking the drill out, but the drill comes out really quickly anyway. Um, so I'm very pleased. I don't really need the hand wheel because I can disconnect the clutch and then do that by hand. But I'm going to put a proper hand wheel on the end there. Um, I'm pleased with the weight. It's I think it's 5.8 kilos, the wooden bit to there. The big blue bit, something like 18. And then the box of tools is about six. So, you know, it's, it's getting heavier, but it's, it's not like one of these big, heavy cast iron things like, like that, which you kind of need two people to move. You really think about it. You know, that's something that I can lift up, pop in the car boot very easily or pop in a shed to store. You know, pop on a shelf, put under a bench. One thing and another, it's been a while since the last update. I've now made the hand wheel for the um, beader. It's just discs of MDF all stuck together. Drill some holes, make it look pretty. Um, it feels really nice. It took a while to work out how to get the clearance to the chain, but that's all but there. Just need to get the chain on and then that's commissioned. Um, here's the sample piece I showed last time. And I can also do these snake patterns, which Lancia Sills are full of. Um, huge learning curve and I've been watching bits on YouTube and people make the most amazing pictures and things from them. Um, whole learning curve to climb. So while the paint was drying I've put together a nibbler table. So the nibbler is a little device like this that goes in a drill and this punch goes up and down and cuts a slot. So a slot like that. Um, 
a little difficult to steer compared with the fret saw because there's this piece around the outside that's in the way so it's not a precision tool um, also cuts cardboard so I've been having a practice and end up little bits of the black line left um, so it, it's versatile it's handy um, but not without its limits also cuts plywood turns out um, let's cut a little bit here so well no volt release switch I've got a corded drill which I've used so little I took me a while to find it So it cuts quite clean, with very little distortion, and you can do funky shapes. This one cuts 2mm um, aluminium and quite thick steel. Um, one of the problems with it is it makes quite a lot of mess, so I've got a tobacco tin on a magnet to pick up the waste. And then if I flip it over, you can see how it's gone together. So there's the old cord drill, a couple of cable ties, block all off the floor, and there's the nibbler piece clamped in. And I could have done this with, um, you can get brackets that clamp round the head of things, or just cable ties and shelf brackets, but you know, that was wood literally off the floor. The table is from, I think, a pre-war fret saw, hobby's fret saw, which I had in the loft. Um, and even when I was using that fret saw, I wasn't using that table, so I found a use for it. I want to know what's the word. The next set of update videos will be looking at the car chassis and getting the body mounted onto it. Uh, the particular difficulty is making space for someone much taller than me. I'm five seven and a half, and the guy is, is having it six foot one. Um, so it's quite a lot of challenge there. That nibbler table, I've made a film showing that big built. There's a one minute version and a seven minute version and a demo of making a bracket with it. The bead roll I haven't edited yet, but in time there'll be a separate film for that. So watch out for that as well. So thank you very much indeed for watching.